The stricken ship is so close to the shore it looks as if you could just step off. So why did 30 people drown? Why were 4,000 in fear of their lives? You see a film and you think, oh, but they should just do this, they should just do this, you know, and you think it's all over-dramatised. Nothing could, compares to actually living it. We couldn't get beyond corridors to get to the life rafts because they had become lift shafts. There, I mean, it was a sheer drop and there was no way past. Things were smashing off the wall and with the power with which they were hitting the, the, uh, the walls, I mean, if you got in the way of that, that was instant death. Instant. Giglio's deputy mayor helped in the rescue operation. The decks were like ice rinks. You couldn't stand up because there was spilt petrol everywhere. It was impossible to get outside. Rose Metcalf from Wimborne in Dorset is helping lawyers uncover the whole truth so lessons can be learnt. Many of the crew we would quite often discuss after our safety trainings that should we ever have to fulfil those procedures, they would not work, they are flawed, they're, they're illogical. There are allegations that cruise companies put pressure on captains to pass close to islands. Suggestions the captain abandoned his sinking ship. Rose wears the same scarf and earrings she was rescued in. Lucky mementos for a young lady who feels very lucky to be alive. I came within inches of, of, of losing my life. If I didn't have a duty to fulfil and a responsibility to others, if I'd started panicking, you know, I could have done any sort of erratic things that, that you know, that would have been, you know, very detrimental. The Costa Concordia will be in Giglio for a year as salvage companies work to right her and tow her to Livorno. Her captain faces trial, crew and passengers await compensation and a safety review. Sally Simmons in Giglio for Meridian tonight.